Bristol family. I thank you, dear Father, for the opportunity that you have granted unto us to come together to continue to look unto the affairs of the kingdom of God. You have not left us alone, but you have come to us and you have opened up our understanding that we might understand and know who Jesus is and what he has done for us. And we bless you and we praise you and we give you all the honor and all of the glory for that which is to be said and done this day that will be edifying to the body of Christ. And we bless you for this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We also would like to, you may be seated if you will, we would like to uh, welcome our online audience. Thank you so much. If this ministry has been and is a blessing to you and you would like to make a contribution for the sake of spreading the gospel, then go to our website, I say, and to uh, hmusa.org, click on give, and you can go ahead and make your contributions there, and it will certainly be a blessing to this ministry and for the sake of others that this gospel will go around the world, and then men might come to know Jesus. Thank you so much for your gifts and for all that you do. And so we're ready to move forward into the Word of God. Thank you so much for the time that you have taken to be here. It is, it is, it's, 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 it's going to pay great dividends. The time that you spend seeking after the things of God will always pay well. There is no question. I was meditating on these things earlier today in reference to um, my own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and, and what he has done in my life. And it's, it's just, I'm, I just stand in awe of, of what God has done. And it is, it's the power of God and his word that has come into my heart and has transformed me and is transforming me into who and what God has called me to do and for, for us to, and what we are all about. We're on the subject of, com, of being complete in Christ. We're, we're looking at that, complete in Christ. And uh, as we look at that, we want to look at Romans chapter number 8. We'll begin our... Uh, uh, That's our jump off text, Romans chapter 8, verses number 32. Complete in Christ, and we'll pick up there where we left off the last time. And it reads like this, verse number 32 says, Who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. There is a message here and that's, that's coming from the Father, and, and it is a message of encouragement to us. Uh, he is encouraging us to put our confidence and trust in him. Father wants us to trust him, and he wants us to understand and know that he has our best interest at heart. Now, one of the things that I found out about God, you know, it, it is his word is his power, if you can get that. The word of God is his power, and this is the confidence that we have in him. The confidence. Well, where is our confidence? Our confidence should be in the Word of God, the power. God said over in Isaiah, he said his word that goes out of his mouth does not return void. Well, whatever God says, I mean, you can take it to the bank. And and, and now, now here's something else that I learned because... Uh, when God speaks, there is no limit on his word. What do I mean when I say that? Well, you can't, 
you, it, there's no question about whether or not what he says is coming to pass. There's no question about it. If he says it, you can say amen. And so as we develop confidence in Father, then all we need to do is listen to what he says. Now, he says, he said, my word that goes forth out of my mouth, Isaiah chapter 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not, what, return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And so, what, what's that? Well, God speaks. You know, we work. Well, well God, he, he, he said he, he don't work. You know, a king, a king just speaks. A king don't have a job where he, he works. He just points the scepter and speaks. And whatever he says, it's going to be carried out. God, our Father, He speaks, and the words that go out of His mouth, they go out and produce and does exactly what He says. Because everything that is, it is because of God. Everything, that's, everything that is, he created all things that there are. Everything that there is. And so everything is subordinate to him. Now, I'm talking about our father. I'm talking about our God. I'm talking about our father. That is our father. You remember when Jesus was raised from the dead? And he said to, he said, you go tell, tell my brethren, tell my, to, that, that I ascend to my father and your father. To my God and your God. So that's who we are talking about. We're talking about our heavenly father. We're talking about our God. Your God and your father has your best interest at heart. Well, come on. We understand the fatherhood from, from just living on the earth. Fathers are responsible to take care of the kids, don't they? Aren't they? In fact, you don't take care of them, put you in jail for that. You don't feed them kids. You, <laughs> you know, yeah. They'll arrest you. Because you won't feed your kids. You won't pay your child support. Well, God, he is going to do what's right. And so he called us children. He says, I'm your father. Then I'm going to assume a father's responsibility. So we need to look at that. We need to look very carefully. See, because this, this is what this thing is about. And so when he speaks, he speaks words that's going to produce good for us. And so in light of that, let's look at what he says here. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Now this is Jesus being offered as a sacrifice to take away the sins of the whole world. You can understand that. Jesus was offered a sacrifice to take away the sin to take away your and my sin. God offered him up, and as a result of that, he has given us all things, everything that we desire, everything we want. Notice, let's read this again. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, I say this, and I'm reading this to you because I want you to understand that, that God cares for you 
and that he has provided. You don't have to do your own hustling. You don't have to hustle. You don't have to, you don't have to worry. You don't have to be concerned because all I want to know is what has Father said? Well, one of the things he said was seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things would be added unto you. Everything that Father says about us is really just is for us. He one place he said, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard. Neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Wow. I, I say this because you're going to have to hear the word of God long enough to develop confidence in his word. If you don't have any confidence in what Father says, you're not going you, to pay any attention and you won't have any faith in it. See, faith in where God's word will produce for us what he says. Get that. Faith in his word will produce in your life what he says. You say, you mean I can have all you can have all of that if you can believe it. All things are possible to him that ah. Do you do you see this? Do you see this? Now, what is this? Why do we have to keep hearing it? Because faith comes by hearing. And, and uh, you know, I'll, I have to just keep preaching this. I have to keep quoting this. I have to keep saying this. That's what I'm supposed to do. I have to keep echoing what God says. The more I echo what Father says, the more you'll hear it, and what you hear will go into your spirit and will produce in you what he says it'll do. It's called growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Child of God, this is, no, this is not a game. It's not, a, it's not something, it's not some tricks, it's not something that you got to hustle and do. This is real. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, if you can understand the reality of the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. I, I, I just, you know, after a while, after you walk in this a while, you begin to see some results of it, and then you begin to like it. Whoa, I want some more of this. I want some more of this. So what do we do? We just feed into it. We feed from him. We feed from him. We feed from him. And that's what's called growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely, now notice what he says here, freely give us what? Everything. You don't have to work for anything. Now we have this idea, we want to work, we want to work. No, you don't have to work for anything. But here's what will happen. When you believe and receive, you will work. See? You, 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 you know, but you can't work for this. Isn't that wonderful how God does it? He gives us, how shall he not freely give us all things? Now, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10, it says, for in him, in Christ, dwells what? All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And, verse 10, you. See, he's talking about me. See, he's, see, see no, watch this. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And you are complete. In him. Now, that, that's, I, I receive, see, I, I can't receive it for you. See, I am complete in Christ. Think about that. Well, what's complete? It's complete. It's not a trick question. It's complete. You, nothing missing, nothing lacking. 
I have, I have access. I have access to all that I desire. Oh, my. Now, now watch this. Now, now listen, child of God. This doesn't work the way your head thinks. Let me tell you how this works. In him, when I receive Christ, in me, in Christ, dwells all the fullness. Now, I'm in Christ. I'm in him. And the word of God that I'm hearing ongoingly is developing and growing me. Oh, boy. Watch this. As I grow, the floodgates of heaven is open toward me. The floodgates of heaven don't just gush out. It washed you away. You couldn't handle that. As I grow in the grace, the floodgates of heaven opens to me, and I'm totally complete, and all things that my heart could desire is given to me. Mm. I don't work for this, you know. See, notice, notice, notice what Romans 8, 8, uh, 8.32 says. How? He who, who, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I think what, here's, listen to me, child of God. Here's how, we, here's what we have missed, and this is why we get backtracked and sidetracked sometimes. When we come into the kingdom, <coughs> We bring this mind over there, and, 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 and this, this guy, don't, he don't belong over there. They just don't live by reasoning. They just live by his faith. So don't, don't even, you, you can't figure God out with your head. We, we make the mistake of trying to do that. Now, you say, well, what is, what, what is this God giving me all things? What is it? Well, I'm, I'm telling you now. When, when, when I receive Christ, see, I'm complete in him. First, uh, Colossians makes it clear. I'm complete in him. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Then remember over in 2 Peter 3.18, he says, grow in him. Grow in the grace. Now, what happens when I, when I grow in him, I'm in him. As I grow, then all of the floodgates of heaven is open to me. They don't, they don't gush out like that, but they grow open. Can you receive that? Now, okay, let me give you an illustration of what I'm talking about. Look at, some of you can understand this. You, you, you've been there. Look, look, at, look at, rewind 20 years. You can do it. You're old enough to do that. Rewind 20 years. Where were you 20 years ago? Where are you now? If you are in the same place right now that you were 20 years ago, you are not growing. If you don't have any more now than you had 20 years ago, you are not growing. If you don't have access to more, more now than you did in 20 years ago, you are not growing. It's simple as that. I'm trying to show you how this works. So I'm growing, so it's not, it's not just bush. I grow in the... You know what growth means? It means grow. It's not a trick question. God showed me this. He says, physical growth and spiritual growth, the principles are the same. They're the same. A child that's born right now, well, 20 years from now, that child would not look like what he looks now. Why? He has grown. A child that's born of the seed of God 
20 years from now, he will not look like he looked right now. He will not, he will, he will, he won't, he won't be the same person that he is right now. But if you sit there every day and stare at him, you won't see anything. <laughs> you see how this works? You, see, you understand how this works? And I think too many of us, we become discouraged because we don't see this instant, instant. This, God doesn't do microwaves. No, he doesn't. He don't do microwaves. He cook. He he, he cook a, a full full bone. No, no, he take the time. He cook the it takes a whole the whole while to cook that cook that roast. He don't speed good demon speed cook it. He don't speed grow you either. Now some Christians get some of us get all frustrated because God's not speed growing us. That's all it is. You just get frustrated because you know you ha you know, ha, puffing and blowing. No, you're going to get this the same way everybody else get it. You're going to grow into it. You're going to grow into it. And people holler, I don't know why God won't heal me. What are you talking about? What's, what's wrong with you? I don't know. When, when, when am I going to get my blessing? <laughs> see what I mean? See that, see that? That attitude is not that. That's the wrong attitude. You better go back and get over to the word of God and find out how God does this. God develops you. He grow you. He said grow in the grace. He never said I'm going to zap you into the grace. He said grow in the grace and in the knowledge. And child of God, you and I are going to have to get in on this word because if God said it, it's coming to pass. And allow yourself to develop. And grow. You couldn't take the trauma of being zapped into the things of God. You grow in the grace. The glory develops and grow and expands inside of you. If, if God just zapped the glory in you, 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 it'd kill you. You couldn't take it. You couldn't. It'd be like a bolt of lightning hit you. It would be. But if he grow you in it, he just grow you in it, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. He is constantly expanding. Wow. You're going to have to get a hold of that because this will, it will sell you down and cause you to be content wherever you are. Remember the word of God tell you that? Be content where? Wherever you are. Stop being anxious. Be anxious for nothing. Many of us spoil ourselves, ruin our journey with an anxiety. Ah, sitting on the edge of the seat. Eh, eh, hurry up. Hurry up, God. Hurry up. Hurry up. You gotta, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm learning this. When you are be content, you learn how to enjoy the kingdom at every level. I'm, I'm having the time of my life right now. I am having the time of my life. But you know I'm going to be bigger than I am now? I'm going to know more than I do now because I am growing. I'm growing in the grace of God. The grace of God is expanding on the inside of me. Wow. And my understanding is enlarged. I love people like I have never loved them before. Right now I do. How did that happen? It grew in me. I am in Christ. I am destined. Romans 8, 29, I am destined, my destiny is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Every day, every day conforms me more and more to the image of Jesus Christ. I look and act more like him every day. Wow. Wow. After, you know, after a while, you know, you, you can begin to see this. Now, when you first start, you don't, you don't see much. 
But after you grow in this a while, you can do a rewind. You look back, so wow, I was there, but now I'm here. Wow. Now watch this. Here's what's exciting. You don't finish this. And of his government, there shall be no end. There's no end to this. He said, what? No, no, there's no. See, see, if we come back down to the mind, see, the mind is, is very limited. And it, all it knows is limits. Your mind, only mind knows, but my spirit knows no, has no limits. I want you to put, in, in second, second Timothy chapter number uh, four and verse number two, uh, hmm, is it the NLT? I knew it. Uh, look at the, uh, I think it's the uh, Amplified. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse, chapter 4 verse 6. Second Timothy 4 verse 6. For I'm already about to be sanctified. Uh, 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 Sacrifice, my life is about to be poured out as a drink offering. The time of my spirit's release from the body is at hand, and I will soon go. Wow. Do you see the restrictions that this puts on us? Wow. You are so restricted. You are a spirit being, but you're trapped in this body, and you are restrict, you're, you're under restraints because you, you can, this thing can't take it. This can't take it. it can't, this can't go where I can go. It can't go because when I get ready to step out of the earth realm, this boy going to have to stay here. <laughs> he ain't going. He ain't going. No, but I can go. And the language that he used, I love that, I like that, I like that. The language that he used, when I, in a time of my spirit's release from the body. And I will do what? Whew. Wow. Ooh, glory to God. I will go with my own kind. I will leave this body. And be with my own kind. For there is no limits. But let's go back. Let's, let's rewind and come back because we are still in the body. God has designed this so that we can excel and expand while even in the body. And we can maximize our time on the earth. See, I think we spend too much time griping and complaining. Dear Lord, you got to grow it till you get big enough to quit complaining and griping and belly aching. Now we do, you know, it's, 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 we don't realize we don't we don't realize how much we do that. But the, but after, after you grow a while, what you do, you get you grow and you get big enough to be so appreciative to who you are and what God has done for you that you are so excited about that, griping don't even cross your mind. I'm so thankful that God said we are to abound in thanksgiving. I'm so, I don't have time to gripe. I don't have time to gripe because I'm giving thanks. Woo, glory to God. I'm giving thanks for all that he has in his doing. I'm complete in him. I'm enjoying my completeness in Christ. I don't have time to gripe. You, yeah. <laughs> you don't have time. And it's, are you growing? Are you expanding? Are you excited about that? What, 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 what's with this griping? I don't have time to gripe. I'm, I'm, a, I'm so excited. Because I am growing. I am growing. I am growing every day, and I know that. I'm growing. I'm expanding. 
the, the kingdom of God. Jesus said, the kingdom is where? Within you. God dwells in me. My body is the temple of God. And God is expanding. The kingdom, the glory of God is expanding expanding inside of me and raising me to levels I've never known. Wow. And that's why I have such an appreciation for others because I'm getting just like my dad. He so loved the world that he gave Jesus. And now I so love people that I tell them about Jesus. I love them. I love them. I don't see, I don't see faults. I don't see them. I don't want to see them. God doesn't see my faults. He see no fault in me. He told me, he said, son, I removed your transgressions just as far from you as the east is from the west. He said, I won't remember your sins anymore. Mm. Oh, boy. I should I remember anybody else's? I don't see them. I don't care. I don't see your faults. I don't see them. I, don't, I won't look at them. I don't see them. I don't see them because God won't see mine. Do you see, do you see how this works? He won't see. God won't look at my faults. He said, this new covenant, that I have created, I have separated myself from your sin. Yeah, God, this is, this is awesome. This is awesome. Woo. Glory to God forevermore. In the book of Hebrews, chapter number 8, Hebrews, Hebrews, oh yeah, oh yeah. For this is, verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. Watch this, watch this. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. Dear God, do you see that? My will and desire for you, I'm not going to put it on a tablet out here. I'm going to write it on your spirit. Wow. And I will be their God. He is my God. And they shall be my people. I do belong to him. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none of his brother saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no. Is this the covenant that we are now living under? Well then why are you remembering other folks' sins? God won't remember yours. I said, he said he won't remember them. He will not remember them. Well, why are you remembering somebody else's? Don't tell me what you saw somebody do. I don't want to hear it. I really don't want to hear it. Don't, don't, don't tell me. Don't, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Because I don't want to hear it. Do you see the power? Do you see this? See, people, we're going to have to recognize truth when truth pops up in our face, the truth that we've never seen before. You can read this book and truth just go, just walk, go around. You just walk right over it and won't even see it until all of a sudden the Holy, Holy Spirit will reveal it to you and say, boo. But when God shows you stuff, take hold to it. Chew on it. He won't remember your sin, so why should you remember other people? Don't you see how in line this is bringing to the fill the earth with God's glory? Don't you see how this is? Listen, if I don't charge you with something, there is no charge against you. Can you see that? If nobody is charging anybody with anything, there is no charge. Did you know we have earthly laws 
that the law itself can do nothing to you if the person does not prefer charges against you. Did you know that? Even though the law wants to do the law can do absolutely nothing unless the person press charges. The law can do absolutely, can't touch you. This is our earthly thing that we got. And unless the person prefer charges against you, they can't do anything. They can't touch you. Wow. God, he don't hold any grudges anymore. Because the justice of God's been satisfied by the blood of Jesus. Good, 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 good God is good. And he won't remember them anymore. So what are you remembering? Well, why, why you keep talking about something that's, that God don't even talk about? Are you still here? Now come on people, this is, this is good stuff here. This, I know this is good preaching. If I if nobody don't say amen but me, I know this is good. No, no. God is waiting for you and I to forgive people. Over in F F Ephesians 4.32, he told us specifically to do that. Look at Ephesians 4.32. And do, be what? To whom? And what else? Doing what? Well, what are you, what are you grabbing about? What are, you, what are you talking about then? What are you, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you mouthing, mouthing about? Have you, have you forgiven them? Well, yeah. Well, what are you talking about then? Don't you see how? Don't you see how the glory? Don't you see how we have to fill the glory with God? Fill the earth with God's glory. Much of the way we're doing it is by shutting up. Shut your mouth and quit yakking about other people and leave them alone. That's where it starts at. See, you see what I'm. You see what God says: forgiving one another. How? Even as God in Christ forgave, forgave his past tense, honey. In case you did, you know, every third grader knows that. <laughs> forgave is already done. Oh God, you better get a hold of that. Even as God in Christ forgave who? You, ha! see, see, you see, 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 your head just goes, goes ballistic. You got to hear what the word says. That's what the word of God says. God forgave you. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be in the family. God forgave you. And he said, now, why don't you forgive others the way that I forgave you? That's the way it's going to have to be. So now, now, now you see, now you see why? Now, now watch this. Oh, God, have, have, thank you. The church is the leader in this. Don't even look at nobody else out there until you. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we walk this out. We do this first. And then when the world see us, it will attract them to do the same. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now, I've decided I'm, this, is, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm at. And this is where this church is going. We ain't doing strife no more. No, no, no. I'm, no, no, no. We, we, this church is not doing strife anymore. We're not, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. If I have to hog tie you and, and, and gag you, we, this church is not doing strife. No, 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 because this is what, this is how God's going to fill the earth with his glory. We are his people, and we're the one that has to take the lead in doing this. We're the one that's got to forgive one another. We're the one that's going to have to be kind to one another. We're the one that's going to have to show tenderness to one another. We're going to have to love people to do it. You can't be running from people. You're going to have to run to them. If you're not in the people business, you better get in it. No, people, this is, this is where it's at. This, this, is, this is where it's at. 
I, I just, I rejoice to go in and among, go among people. I rejoice to do that. Because when I go and I sow, I sow the grace to God everywhere I go. I want to do that. That's, I want to do it. I want, I love people on purpose. I want to do that because God, that's a mandate. That's a mandate directed from above. And you be, you be what? To one another. Do you, see, do you see how powerful that is? And you be what? Tenderhearted. Wow. And you do what? Forgiving. What? Come on, people. Do, do you see all the friction? Put the devil completely out of business. He, don't get, he has no job. Put him on welfare. Put the devil on welfare. No, really. Only he, he had no job. He's unemployed. Why? Because I've chosen to be a forgiver. When you love people and forgive them, there's no friction there. There is no people. Do you see how simple this is? Do you see what makes us complete in him? That is what makes us complete. That's what uh, Colossians 2, 13, for, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. You are complete in him. I'm complete. Now, as, as all this is, see, all of, these, all of this is, is happening simultaneously. I'm walking in love. I'm forgiving one another. And the floodgates of heaven is open toward me. All this is going on at one time. This is one stroke. Oh, God. As I love one another, as I am kind to one another, as I am tenderhearted to one another, as I am forgiving one another, at the same time, the floodgates of heaven is open to me. I am lacking nothing. Everything, I, I, I have everything because it's all in one stroke. God. But you see, you know what, you see what the devil come and told a lie. The devil said, come on, I, I want you, the devil wants you to have your needs met and at the same time packing a grudge against somebody. That's not going to work. You're not going to have your needs met. You're not going to walk heel and pack a grudge at the same time. Oh, we want to be healed, all right. Oh, heal me, Jesus. Heal me, Jesus. Heal me. And at the same time, pack a grudge. It's not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. Grace doesn't work that way. You can walk in your healing, all right. But as you're walking in your healing, you're walking in the love at the same time. You're walking in forgiveness at the same time. You're being kind to one another at the same time. You are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ at the same time. Don't you see? That's what complete means. Complete. And you are what? Complete. I'm complete. I'm walking in love. I'm forgiven and I'm healed too. And I'm not broke. Do you see how it works? You see how that works? But we want to, we want, oh God, I need some money. Yeah, but you're packing a grudge. Ah. <laughs> don't, don't you see? Do you see what complete means? Complete means complete. And now watch this. All we do is choose to do this. When we choose Christ, when we choose Jesus, we choose to do this. We choose to do it, and then we grow in that. We're faithful, being faithful in our calling is all part of the same thing. We're committed. We're committed to the local church to be a part of that element to take the gospel. We're committed to that. Well, your faithfulness is part of the 
thing that makes you complete. See, you, 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 you're not faithful, you know. You, somebody, somebody can put in the confidence in you and you, and you want to be healed. Ah. So don't you see, I, or do you see what complete means? To com be complete means I'm faithful in my calling. I walk in love. I forgive. I have all of my needs met. The fuck is, and I'm growing in this, and it's all constantly expanding. See, I'm going to have more than what I presently have. I'm going to love more than what I presently love. I'm going to do more. I'm going to, I'm, 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 that, all of that is, is expand, I'm expanding in it, and I don't have to make it happen. The glory, the glory of God, is inside of me mm, expanding, expanding me. I'm not as faithful as I'm going to be because I'm growing in faithfulness. I'm not as forgiving as I'm going to be. I'm growing in forgiveness. I don't love as much as I'm going to love. I'm growing. Do you see, do you see what, do you, and, and, and watch this, it's just a constant, it's a constant, it's a constancy, it's a constancy. You ever see grass come up in, through concrete and asphalt? How in the world do that happen? Constant pressure, expanding, the force of that seed, it's not pushing hard. Just, it's just pushing consistently. Just consistently. I, I see that and I'm, I'm amazed. You look at, look at an old parking lot and weeds and grasses everywhere. How did that happen? Well, I tell you what, it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. You all of a sudden, you walk down the street and the concrete has been popped up. The tree root pushed it up. That's concrete. I don't care. Consistent growth. Consistent pressure. Consistent expanding. Cause that to happen. Over, didn't happen overnight. You go down to the stream and you see a rut in the stone where the water cut the rock. How did you do that? Consistently. Consistent pressure. Trip, 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 trip. Wow. You, all of a sudden, the glory of God is all over you. How did that happen? The inward pressure and power of God's word inside of you just kept pushing and pushing. And look at what you have become. And that's not the end of you. You're going to continue to grow in this grace. That is what God calls us being complete in him. He is not in any hurry. We are growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have received him, the seed of God. The seed of God entered into my spirit as a seed. As a seed of God, a seed of God. We are born again, not of corruptible seed. We are born again of a seed. A seed was placed in my heart. See, what did you see? The word of God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, the word of God, the seed of God, the seed of God. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, having been born again, not of what? 
seed, but what? Incorruptible. Through what? The Word of God, which does what? Lives and about how long? Ah! Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> You're not something that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. No, the seed went inside of you. And you are, you are, you are a permanent icon. Forever. You will abide for because the seed went where? In your heart. And made, came, and you become a new creature in Christ. Wow. Do you see, do you see, now you see who you are? This is, now all God is saying to you is, this is what I've done for you. You got to be in agreement with me. And then we, we can just, we, we, and then we, we, we'll take this on because, because now what God has done for you there's tons of others out there waiting to get what you have. Do you see that? Can you see? Do you see that? Do you see what? Do you see the importance of us being faithful? Do you see what the church is about? Do you see what the church is about? God doesn't just love you, but He loved the whole world. He has no pets. The whole world is his pet. All the kids are his, is his pet. Do, do you understand the? See, when as you begin to understand the principles of this journey, it really enlightens us to be faithful. Because I understand, I understand the heart of God, to some extent, that He's desirous that all men come to repentance. Over in Second Peter, He He reveals this. He reveals this over here in 2 Peter. Second Peter chapter number 3. He said, the Lord is not slack concerning 3, 9. The Lord is not slack, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us not willing that any should perish. Do, do, do you see what he said there? Uh, yeah, that very one that you don't like. God does not want them to perish. The one that, that the very one that you 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 you, you know just, just rubbed you the wrong direction every time you see him. He doesn't want them. Do, do you see this? So, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do about this? Well, well, God doesn't doesn't feel about them the way you do. So, what are you going to do? Get God to come and hang out with you, then go hang out with them? Because he like he like God loves them just like he loves you. God, the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish, but that what? All come to he doesn't he want everybody in. Do you see the passion in his heart? See, I don't, I, I'm telling you, one, once we see this, I don't see how we could even pack a grudge against anybody. I, I know we get hung up on what somebody said or did to you, but that's, so what, who are you? You understand? You understand? No. No, no. You, you cannot not love people. And don't tell me what they're doing. I'll tell you what, you can tell me what they're doing after you tell me what you're doing. See, we're not going to tell on us. But we'll sure tell you what somebody else is doing. You see what you, are you see, do you see how, this, how the devil manipulates us? No, you're complete in him. And God wants all. He says, he's not, uh, it's amazing. And you say, but look at what they, I don't care what they did. Jesus, says blood was shed to remove sin. Well, it took care of you, didn't it? 
Oh, oh, I know what we say. Oh, I, I didn't. I wasn't that bad. <laughs> I don't know. I know how the human mind is. But at least I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm telling you how we think, how we think, how we talk. Did you see such and such? Oh, shut up. You can't live like You can't talk like that. You got to allow the glory of God to work in you, to, tr to grow you out of that. You can't just walk out of that. You got to grow out of that. If you mean, you just, you got to grow out of being mean. You just don't say, well, I'm not going to be mean anymore. You can't help it. you just mean. <laughs> you got to grow out of that. The grace of God that completes us. We are complete in Christ. In Christ. We are complete in and in him alone. And you trust that and allow that grace to grow. Now he said, now they'll receive, you got to receive the grace. You receive the grace. Receiving Jesus is receiving grace. Jesus is grace. It's a gift of God. Jesus is the gift of God. God so loved the world, he gave. His only begotten Son, that whoever believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. People, we, 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 our lives can be transformed once we get the understanding that we need and embrace the grace of God and allow God to grow in us. You, you can't change you. People think they can change themselves. You can't change you. You can't change you. I mean, come on, wouldn't it be awful? Jesus went to the cross in our, and he didn't know that we could change ourselves. Wow, what a, what, what wow, that's, that's, ooh. He went through all of that, and at the same time, we could change ourselves. You didn't have to do that. Oh, come on. The fact that you can fix you is like a, pfft. you know, people that, that keep putting, effort into trying to fix themselves rather than surrendering to the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, people that are, that are strung out on, on dope and all kinds of habit-forming substances in the earth. And they can't do, they can't, and they keep trying to help themselves. You can't help you. You can't fix you. The reason that you got strung out there is because you were trying to fix you, trying to get rid of that lump in your throat. Couldn't go anywhere. No, you're going to have to surrender and yield to the blood of Jesus. Trust Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And people don't stop thinking that you got to do something. There's nothing for you to do. Because that's another trick from the adversary is to tell you, well, you, you can do this. You can't do anything but suffer. You can't do it. Put your trust in someone that has already done what needs to be done. His name is Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Gave his life for you and for I, for the whole world. And whoever believe on him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That is your and my hope. That's your hope. There is no drugs that can exonerate you and set you free. There is no human counsel that can set you free. Because if there is, if there is human counsel or there is drug, or there is anything that can free us, then God didn't know it. And he let Jesus go to the cross for nothing. You understand? You understand that? See, you, understand? you see that? No. Jesus went to that cross because he is the way, he is the only way to exonerate the human race, to set us free, and to bring us in line with the will of God. 
He did it for us. And all we have to do is simply receive him. Receive his grace. Receive him. You that are watching online, receive Jesus Christ. That's the hope that you need. That's the hope that you have. You need to reach out to him. You need to say to him, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I need you. I cannot fight this by myself. The pain is too great. I need you, Jesus. And if you'll do that, I can assure you that God will come into your heart. He'll transform you. He will make something out of you that you never could have made out of yourself. And it will cause you to excel. This is, there's no time to put this off. The time is right now. The Spirit of God speaking to your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. I can't do it without you. Come into my heart. Would you save me, Lord? If you'll do that, then God will transform you, and you will be complete in him and find yourself a good local church. This, I recommend this one, where you can be taught and loved and given the things of God and the tools that's needed to grow and develop and be what God's called you to be. God bless you. Thank you so much. Father, we thank you this day for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given unto us to come together and to be fed the word of God so that we can run our race, finish our course, and be with you forever. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you, my dear friend.